Hello, hello. Welcome back to Soulmates in Separation, Connections in Separation. My name is Gemma and I am delighted to be pulling some cards, tapping into some energies for you today. I'm going to start off with the messages here. Last week I looked at you in the main reading over here on YouTube and then we took a look at your person in the extended over on Patreon. This week I'm going to flip that around so we're going to take a look at your person in this reading and then for anybody that's interested in the extended the link to that is in the description and that is over on Patreon. I'm going to do a flip flop each week um, just to make these videos more manageable for me to to bring out to bring to you on a weekly basis like this and also give the Patreons um, the people that do want to support me in that way and keep my channel going the additional exclusive content that they have come to expect so we're pulling into your energy and we have energetic stalking okay energetic stalking now in my horrendous cursive there it does look a little bit like energetic skating <laughs> but it does say energetic stalking now we oh we looked at this didn't we this is your person's energy not yours but we looked at this last week this energy entanglement thing and it was on both sides it was in the main reading and it was certainly in your person's energy in the extended here um let's get some more cards out before we really start talking about this um energetic stalking is absolutely something that can be done unconsciously and given what i saw for your person in the extended on patreon last week i would say that this is more of an unconscious thing rather than an active because it's very possible to consciously stalk somebody's energy for sure i mean anybody who's even slightly spiritually enlightened or awakened will probably know quite well how to do this lucid dreaming astral traveling telepathic communication i'm sure you've all at the very least dabbled in such things to greater or lesser successes perhaps await further instructions okay right this is like your person has kind of been energetically stalking you and what they're picking up on probably unconsciously is now's not the right time just 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 hold off just wait and again in the extended last week very much saw they're waiting for you um kind of frustrating i could see you hoping for them them waiting for you nobody doing anything um what else my heart is always connected to you okay one more message please and then i will start clarifying all of this with tarot get some oracle on this as well yeah they've picked up on something they've picked up on something in your energy that's told them to hold fire to hang back um maybe for some of them they are starting to wonder on some conscious level whether they are tapping into something because they they do feel connected they do feel connected you are strong enough okay is this what they're saying to you energetically <laughs> or is this what they're telling themselves strong enough to hold back strong enough to wait fascinating energies let's get some oracle on this Yeah, I would say I, I'm very much guided to tell you at this point that a lot of what's going on here is, is completely unconscious on your person's behalf here. Um, 
possibly they are hesitating or, or, or refusing to come towards you or refusing to reach out. But it's it's based on what they will get, what they will feel is like a, a gut instinct, like just a feeling. It's, yeah, it's probably not the best time. They might not have even questioned why they feel so certain of that. But it, it goes deeper. Yeah, bone collector. Right. It's a very magician-y kind of energy. It's card number one in this enchanted map deck. Bone collector absolutely does suggest to me that your person is starting to look at this more closely, um, trying to be like more present with this energy. And as I said, I feel it is unconscious, but I think they're starting to move into this energy of recognize it basically starting to wake up to this you know it, I, I felt it here with this my heart is always connected to you but this is very much um being asked to take a really close look at this um with awareness with presence um stepping away from unconsciousness and very much into the energy of being well more conscious um, perhaps this gut feeling they have is very strong and perhaps they are taking a moment to step back and think where is all this coming from where is all this energy coming from last week when we looked at the extended it was very clear that perhaps your person actually had not made the connection between all of these strange confusing feelings and you or the connection that they share or had or they believe had once shared with you that they hadn't made the hadn't realized that they were related things i think they're starting to figure it out is what i'm seeing here i think the penny is about to drop which is kind of interesting um, I would, you know, waking up or, or ascending or, or, or awakening in a spiritual sense it comes in increments, um, manageable <laughs> increments. I'm laughing because they don't necessarily always feel like they're manageable increments. Um, but after the event, they are certainly, we can, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. we can look back and say, yeah, that was probably manageable. So don't expect this all to, you know, suddenly to just wake up to everything and everything to fall magically into place. Flexible. They are being open-minded, I would say, possibly far more open-minded regarding all of this than they have been in the past, perhaps where they have been rather stubborn or closed minded or kind of limited in their way of thinking or restricted in their mindset. Yeah, something seems to have cracked open here. Within them, possibly their heart chakra, although um, many people will say a twin flame journey, um, the, the meeting the soul connection, that initial soul shock of meeting your twin flame is often um, an, an involuntary cracking open of the heart chakra, which just allows that rush of love. But while it's open, it's like Pandora's box. While it's open, everything is, is go, coming in go, and, and it's like the good and the bad, unfortunately, all comes in and you kind of, um, I think, it's not necessarily that something has happened that's new or different in terms of this connection, but they're starting to connect the dots. They're starting to become aware where it's coming from. I think the feelings and the, the confusion and the frustration has been with your person for a great deal of time, but they're starting to open their mind a little bit and think, when did all this, you know, you know, I'm trying to think of like a, a masculine way of looking at this. And, and I say that not because I'm presuming your person is male. I'm saying that because they are the divine masculine counterpart of this connection. Um, there would be quite a rational and logical step by step. So it would be, well, when did all of this start? Um, 
when did I start feeling these things? What happened around that time? And, and I think they're starting to slowly unpack. And then this epiphany is possibly just around the corner. Some more cards on this for you. I did enjoy the way last week both of the readings really tied into each other so neatly. Um, so I would expect that we would have a similar kind of thing here. Um, yeah, the I called last week I called the reading Energy Entanglement, and that was certainly a title I could have easily used for both sides of this story. Um, so Cupid's arrow. Have faith. Love is coming. Surprise. Initiation. Nope. Invitation or meeting and hesitation. Hesitation. That's the word that's... Yeah. This is like... In their mind, they know that at some point they're going to come back around to you. But this await further instructions has pushed them to not not the right time i wonder what it is you are sending out energetically that's causing them to slam the brakes on here do you know are you aware of it if that's something you want to share if you're very very conscious that that's something you're doing and you have very good reasons and you want to share those reasons in the comments section i would love to hear containment yeah cauldron containment it's like containing this love containing this urge to come forward here yeah they're holding themselves back for sure and the strength i believe this is them telling themselves no i have to be strong nope i have to resist nope this would be no good or whatever logical way they're rationalizing this it's it, it all comes down to this gut feeling that they need to be awaiting further instructions here are they still waiting for you i think many of them are some not necessarily like a really overt you just reaching out and hey how's it going long time no speak stranger kind of thing but like maybe they're keeping an eye on your social media or they're asking people about you but Try to get a gauge of where you're at somehow. Cleansing waters, purification activates vibrant life force. It's not quite time to wake up yet. Look how she's still cleaning herself off and her eyes are closed. Yes, she's not quite ready to emerge from this healing process that's occurring. I would say we're starting to get there. Yeah, the, the penny is still sort of dropping here. Um, but yeah, holding back, hesitations, waiting, strength, resilience, containment. We're, we're, we're holding back for sure. It's not detachment. It's holding back. And there is, of course, a distinction there, isn't there? Okay, let's get some tarot on this. This is where it all starts to really make sense when we get the tarot. Okay, we do have two number ones here. Um, this is card number 19. One and nine equals ten. Ten and zero breaks down to a one. This is card number one here. Um, in initiation, the beginning, the first step, the rebirth, the potential, the opportunities, reinvigoration, reconnection, reconciliation. These are all things your person is thinking about, but there's, there's a not quite yet. Just, just hold your horses. Just stick a pin in that one. Hang on for now. Like I said, this is not detachment. This is intuitive holding back. And we have, yeah, they are absolutely keeping an eye on you for sure. They are definitely trying to get a gauge of where it is you're at. I don't know how. And of course, that will absolutely resonate on very different levels for many of you. Um, 
Perhaps they're looking at your social media. Perhaps they're asking friends about you. Perhaps there is a completely different other way that, you know, that, that uniquely resonates for you and your personal situation. Um, like for myself personally, um, I spoke to a friend once and said, well, there's no way that this could ever be happening because I don't post anything on social media. I'm terrible. I have several accounts that have just completely dead accounts. I don't have the time for it. I don't have the inclination for it. I don't have the motivation for it. Apologies for anybody that does follow me on social media and just sees I'm like a perpetual no show. Um, I work online a lot. So when I'm not online, I am not online. I literally, when I leave my house, I, I don't even take my mobile phone with me, which is completely crazy to some of my friends. Um, but I, I absolutely detach from that significantly. And then my friend pointed out, well, you know, they could be watching your YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> to get an idea where you are energetically at and I'm like oh shit yeah yeah you're right yeah that's that's totally a thing so there may be what I'm trying to say is there may be another way that I have not listed here that they're doing it but I'm telling you they're doing it the page of swords is a card of spying curiosity prying into secrets trying to find out more information um, gathering information a thirst for knowledge all that kind of stuff they're trying to gauge where you are at in your life, your circumstances, just your energy in general. Do you come across like you're in a good, happy place? What what are they feeling from you? It's not so much, um, this is very intuitive, it's not so much like what you might be saying specifically, but like the, what where you seem to be at in your mindset. You also have the Queen of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, the Queen of Cups. Wow, queenly energy, beautiful. There's the Soulmate card, the Six of Cups, Justice, Libra energy. So we've got Scorpio, Libra and Cancer here. One more, please. The Queen of Wands. Wow. We have uh, tripled up on our queenly energy. Divine Feminine, for sure. Who's missing? Always important to take note of who's missing when we see three cards show up in this way. And of course, who is missing is uh, our beautiful Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is, of course, notorious for being the sharpest, bitchiest meanest queen she's completely misunderstood i love the queen of swords but she's misunderstood not just in tarot i mean as a personality um she's no pushover she's cold she's true to her word but yeah she's sharp she's sharp she's got a flipping sword for goodness sake of course she's sharp and this tells me whatever your person seems to have gleaned from their investigations here is they are seeing somebody here who is kind of soft and nurturing and feminine and receptive and present and sincere and authentic, possibly a little bit seductive and attractive, um, feminine, graceful energy. But somebody has a sword, right? Somebody has a sword in this equation. But we don't see the justice card we don't misunderstand the justice card in the way we may, might misunderstand the personality of the Queen of Swords. Whereas some people might look at the Queen of Swords and misinterpret her intentions as just being a bitch. This is fair. This is reasonable. This is fair. Nobody can look at the justice card and go, oh, she's awful. No, you look at the justice card and you think, well, I can't really argue with that because that's fair. Okay. I might not necessarily like it, but I can't, what can, what can you, you can't argue with that because it's what's right. It's what's fair. It's the truth. It's balanced. And we also have this very soft memories, nostalgia, looking back. We have an energy here of valuing connection here. I think this person, whatever they have seen, 
whether energetically or social media kind of thing, whatever they, whatever conclusions they have arrived at regarding where it is you are at right now, they think you're in a good receptive place. Which is funny because this feels rather approachable and yet they're not approaching. Their intuition is still telling them to hold back. But this feels incredibly approachable. So I'm not sure. Perhaps I've got this slightly in the wrong order. Perhaps their intuition told them to hold back first. And that was the thing that prompted them to take a peek. And this is what they're about to see. But nonetheless, the energy of hesitation, waiting and confining their energy and not being quite ready is still here. Small steps, number one, small steps. We're right at the beginning of this, having a very open-minded, seeing things a different way kind of outlook. Um, they're gearing up to something for sure. And they're keeping an eye on you, for sure, in some way, shape or form. I am going to move this over to the extended and take a look at you this time. Next week, we'll flip flop it again the other way and I will proceed in that manner for the duration. Um, I am hoping to go away to see a friend um, for a few days next week. So next week will probably be a pre-record in advance. So um, it won't be necessarily the exact same time that you see it will be the day that I've read it or the next day um, but I'll let you know what's going on with that link to the extended is as always in the description have a wonderful week guys take care